that. You have to remember why the area got designated as an area of concern in the first place. It caught on fire, right? Not unlike some other urban rivers because they had oil films on top. They had raw sewage flowing down the river. Um, it, it smelled bad, it looked bad, it was unhealthy. They were worse than many other places. And usually they were industrial areas, a lot of urbanism. They had, they had industries spewing chemicals and effluent uh, out, of, out of their pipes. That led to uh, permitting, a permitting structure through the Department of Environmental Quality to reduce those pollutants and clean up those waters, improve the chemistry of the river was one. Uh, a lot of uh, abandoned dump sites that were leaching in uh, the river had bad uh, uh, discharges going into the river, so they, they started addressing some of these abandoned dump sites and some of these uh, old brownfield sites. Um, a lot of people had failed septic systems that were running into uh, the river. Well, that's sewage. Well, they, had, they started addressing failed septic systems. Illegal dumping terrible as it might be, that's a criminal activity. People just purposely dumping things in the river. It's not really all that homeowner problem, you know, with their oil changes, even though that's a great improvement. You change the practice of a million people dumping a little bit of oil down into a sewer. Well, it's all coming right down here. So the chemistry is improved. The, the detention basins, the, 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 remo the elimination of the CSOs, sewer separation projects, those are big concrete, very expensive projects, big engineering projects. That's reduced the, the, the sewage that's gone here, but we still have the problem of a lot of water coming down here because we keep on building out. The river is small. We keep on building out impervious surfaces. All that water falls on the ground, goes across the concrete, picks up our oil and our glycol from our cars. It's mostly automotive pollutants and then it gets delivered very quickly to this river. It's a very small river. River rises up very fast, flushes through here, moves the wood around, carries, all the, carries away the banks, that sediment gets in here, and that has a, a tendency of ruining, ruining the fishery. That's another reason the, the area was made a area of concern, is it wasn't, didn't have any recreational value, as obviously it was unhealthy, it's not only unhealthy for people, which is number one in our society, but it was unhealthy for the fish because we couldn't eat them if we even could catch them, right? There were hardly any fish, and the fish that were here were diseased and, and unedible because of the pollutants in here. So as things increase in, in quality, the fish are surviving, will have healthier fish we still have that uh, contaminated sediment situation because we have mercury falling from the sky. We have PCBs, you know, still leaching into the river. So it'd be a while before you, you could feel comfortable about eating a large quantity of fish. There are fish that you can eat. You just can't eat a large number of them. Uh, but there's some fish that spend a lot of time on the bottom you know, suckers and catfish and those kind of things, that bioaccumulation of, of, of toxics, they just might as well stay away from those. But uh, there's bass in here, there's pike in here, so there are, there are game fish, panfish. It's a recreation. Hardly anybody eats these fish, though. So th there's a the chemistry, there's the sewerage, uh, and then it's a volume of water.